I've got cinematic settings for the Lumix GH6 to get the most out of your GH6 for video. If you're new here, my name is Caleb and I've been doing freelance videos since 2012 and I've been using Lumix cameras since the GH4. So if you want to learn more about Lumix cameras like the S5, GH5, or the Lumix GH6, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now these are settings that I've been using to get the most out of the GH6 for video that I found has been useful. There may be things in here that you're doing just a little bit different that's totally fine, but these settings might be a good place to start. Now to get some of these settings, you're gonna at least have to have the firmware update 2.2. So if you haven't already updated your firmware, make sure you update that to at least 2.2. Now when we go into the menu, the very first thing that I'm gonna do is set up the photo style or color profile that I wanna shoot in. Now I have been shooting a ton in Vlog and I actually love Vlog on the GH6. I think it is so good, but another profile that I like to shoot in is is obviously natural and here's the settings that I have for natural I have contrast at minus two highlight zero shadow zero saturation minus one hue minus one sharpness minus five and noise reduction at zero I found those settings really work well on the natural color profile to get really the colors that I want. But like I said, I've been shooting mostly in Vlog and it has been working so well on the Lumix GH6. The next thing that I'm gonna do is go and set my SS gain operation. Now it might come out of camera as a shutter speed, but we're gonna set it to a shutter angle. So instead of worrying about, you know, if you're shooting in 24 frames per second or if you're shooting in 60 frames per second, making sure your shutter speed is double the frame rate, but setting the shutter angle is going to make sure you're automatically double your frame rate. So it sets it at a 180 angle. So whether you're shooting at 24 frames per second, 60 frames per second, this ensures that you're always at the right shutter speed. Then I want to go in here and I want to set my record file format. Now I've been mostly shooting in MLV, but I've also been shooting some in ProRes and I will get to that here in just a little bit. MP4, I don't really even touch that format, but if you're looking for some 8-bit options on the GH6, you'll find those, very few of those in the MP4. And then we get to the record quality and this is where you're going to want to kind of shuffle through and see all of these different record quality settings that you have here, starting with 5.8K at 30 or 24 frames per second. This is what's been going around as kind of that open gate 5.8K. It's going to allow you to use the full sensor size, vertical and horizontal, but there really are so many different options. Another favorite of mine are some of these Cinema 4K options, but also 4K 120. Now you'll see there's a lot of 420. 10 bit options. There's a lot of 422 10 bit options. 420 is going to be a little easier on your recording, but you still get great color even shooting in vlog. I haven't noticed a ton of banding or glitches while shooting 420 and I've really been liking using that profile because it is a little bit easier to work with. And then finally what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go in here and set my focus peaking. Now I set it really at the highest sensitivity at plus two and that just kind of helps know what's in focus and I use the color blue because it's really easy to see on the monitor especially using like a manual focus lens you're going to be able to see what is or what is not in focus with that focus peaking all right the next area that I'm going to go to is actually this gear right here and if it is not already you're going to want to set your ISO increments to a third that's going to give you just a little bit more control over your ISO. Another thing that I like to have on somewhat on a regular basis is the histogram. That kind of just shows what overall the image looks like as far as exposure goes. And you can kind of move this around too, but having your histogram on there kind of gives you an overview of the exposure of the image. However, we are gonna to get to some better options for measuring your exposure. But first, let's set the photo grid on. I like it at thirds, just so I have that rule of thirds on my screen at all times. And then one of the settings that I've really fallen in love with on the GH6 and on the S5 is this luminance spot meter. Now I have a whole video on getting perfect exposure on your GH6. This is one of the tools that I've been using a lot. Now with this, you'll be able to move it around to different parts of the image and gauge the exposure with this luminance spot meter, especially if you're using a gray card, you're able to dial in exposure precisely, but this is something that I have on the screen all time. And you can see the little box right there 
on the monitor. Now, if you are shooting that open gate 5.8K, one of the things that you might wanna turn on are the frame markers. And now you're able to kind of set the different different types of looks that you might want. So maybe like a super widescreen 235, 169 is kind of the normal. And then you also have the one one option, which is square. And then nine by 16, which actually is going to be the vertical. So when you go back and you turn this on, and especially if you're shooting for social media, now you have that frame and you're gonna be able to see what's in that frame for when you go and shoot. This is one of the great tools on the GH6, especially for content creators, or if you're shooting for other clients that use social media, especially vertical video. And again, you have the full readout of the sensor vertically. Now, another exposure tool that I use is this zebra pattern, and you're gonna to wanna to set these zebra stripes, this zebra pattern, according to the color profile that you're using. And again, I have all of that in that exposure video but it's not a one zebra fits all you're going to have to adjust it according to the color profile that you're shooting in one of the best tools for exposure is the waveform and you're going to be able to find that right here in this part of the menu and again you can kind of move it around your screen but this is going to give you a look of what you're seeing in the image and i go over this way more detailed in that exposure video but make sure you're using this and i would suggest that you set it to a function button somewhere set a shortcut to a function button that way you can turn it on turn it off really quick and you're not spending a lot of time running through the menu looking for it but this is so helpful when it comes to shooting video you want to nail your exposure and this waveform is going to allow you to do that and then you're also going to find the red record frame indicator and i would suggest turning this on because if you have it off you'll just get a little dot showing your recording but if you turn this on and it's very similar to the s5 you have a whole box around your screen that tells you you are recording just like that. Then we're gonna go into the wrench and this is where you find the different card formats. So if you want to totally format your card, the CF Express or the SD card that you have in here, that's where you're gonna find that. And this is where you're gonna be able to turn on SSD recording. So if you did the firmware update to 2.2, you will have SSD recording through USB-C. And this is where I'm gonna shoot that ProRes because I'm gonna have a lot more storage. It supports a two terabyte drive, but to record ProRes, you need a lot of space, and I would suggest using the USB SSD recording. Now with the SSD recording, you're gonna lose the 120 frames per second because the max readout is gonna be the 60 frames per second, and I have a whole video about the SSD recording firmware. One last thing that you're gonna to wanna to set up in this menu is actually going to be the system frequency. Now, if you are not in the U.S., you might be shooting at 50 hertz here in the U.S. Where I'm at, I am going to set this at the 5994 hertz, or you can use the 24 hertz, but you're going to lose some of those shoot settings that we went through earlier. So to have the most options, I keep mine at the 60 hertz NTSC, and with that, I'm able to access all those settings. I hope this video was helpful in getting some of these settings set up on your GH6 to get the most out of the GH6 for video. If you have questions or anything that you want to add, make sure you add those down in the comment section and we can get a conversation started down there. Well, that's really all I have for this video. If you have time, maybe stick around, watch one of the videos that's popping up on your screen right here. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.